Hello and welcome to today's lesson on land, livestock and fishery. Students, you remember in our previous lesson we discussed population growth. Let's start today's lesson by discussing land, which is one of the resource bases of Ethiopia. Land is a very important resource base on which production and economic development are based. Some of the economic activities include agriculture, industry, and constructions. These activities are highly dependent on the availability and suitability of land. Students, do you remember that we said 85% of Ethiopia's population depends on agriculture? What do you think is the reason for this? The main reason why the population depends on agriculture is the presence of suitable land for agricultural activities. Ethiopia has a land area of about 1.1 million kilometers square, of which 35% is considered suitable for agriculture. Students, Ethiopia has most important soil types and diversified agroecological zones suitable for agriculture. Individually, I want you to jot down at least two types of soil and are suitable for agriculture. You have one minute. Did you jot down two types of soil that are suitable for agriculture? The two main types of soil suitable for agriculture are red to reddish brown with important minerals for crops, brownish to gray and black soil with high clay content, drainage and conditioning important for agriculture. 85% of the Ethiopian population live in the highland areas of the country. Highland areas occupy approximately 45% of the total land area of the country and most of these areas are endowed with the two main types of soil that are suitable for agriculture. Students, what does agroecological zone mean to you? How is it defined? An agroecological zone 
is a land resource mapping unit defined in terms of climate, landform and soils, and or land cover. An agroecological zone has a specific range of potentials and constraints for land use. Before we discuss the agroecological zones of Ethiopia, I want you to list the major types of agroecological zones of Ethiopia in your exercise books. You have one minute. Students, did you write down the agroecological zones of Ethiopia? Very good. They are Wurch, Dega, Wenadega, Kola, and Baraha. The table I'm going to show you in a moment will show the range of altitude the agroecological zone. In Ethiopia, traditionally, there are five major categories of agroecological zones. Wurch, Dega, Weinadega, Kola, and Baraha. The Wurch zone is cold and moist. It is found at an altitude of 3,200 meters and above. The Dega zone is cool and humid. It is found at an altitude of 2,300 to 3,200 meters. The Wena de Gazon is cool and subhumid. It is found at an altitude of 1,500 to 2,300 or 2,400 meters. The Kola zone is warm and semi-arid. It is found at an altitude of 500 to 1,500 or 1,800 meters. The Baraha zone is hot arid. It is found at an altitude below 500 meters. According to recent study, currently the agroecological zones of the country can be classified into 18 major agroecological zones and also 49 sub-agroecological zones. Students, now let's discuss the other resource base of the country, which is livestock. Ethiopia has the largest livestock population in Africa. It stands 10th in the world. Ethiopia's livestock include cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, camel rearing, poultry production, and beekeeping. Students, do you know how much the livestock sector contributes to the Ethiopian economy? Discuss with the students sitting next to you.
students, did you get the answer to the question? Well, the question can be answered from individual households and national perspective. For example, at household level, livestock can be used as source of food and income, and also as a means of transport. At national level, livestock contributes to GDP, generates foreign currency, and creates employment opportunity. Livestock is estimated to account for 10% of the GDP and 30% of employment opportunity created by agriculture sector. In addition, the country is earning foreign currency through the export of live animals and livestock products. According to the Central Statistics Authority's estimation, Ethiopia has a large number of livestock populations. In 2006-07, Ethiopia had 43 million cattle with a yield of 2.63 million liters of cow milk, 25 million sheep, 23 million goats, 5.7 million equines, 2.3 million camels with a yield of 114.18 liters of milk, and 41 million chickens with a yield of 81.7 million eggs. As you might have read on your textbook, 99.4% of the total cattle in Ethiopia are local breeds. That is, they are indigenous to their respective regions. The predominant cattle breed that is found in Ethiopia is Zebu. In addition to Zebu, the main cattle breeds identified and characterized so far include the following. The Borana breed, the Fogara breed, the Horo breed, the Shagko or Gimira breed, the Abigar or Nuer breed, and the Afar breed. Despite the importance of livestock for the household and for the country's economy, the sector remains underdeveloped and underutilized. Do you know what factors affect the development of the livestock sector? Take two minutes and identify some of these factors by discussing with the students sitting next to you.
I hope you have identified some of the factors that affect the development of the livestock sector. The factors can be classified into four categories. These factors are environmental, technical, infrastructural, and institutional factors. The environmental factors contribute to the presence of diseases and insects. The technical factors include lack of trained personnel. The infrastructural factors include lack of pure water, road network, and others. The institutional factors refer to the lack of veterinary and other services, lack of appropriate policy and incentive mechanisms. Students, now I will explain the third important resource base of Ethiopia, which is fishery. Fishery has a potential to contribute to the national economy. This is because of the presence of lakes, rivers, and reservoirs in Ethiopia. Indeed, the country has great potential to benefit from the fish industry. Studies show Ethiopia has a potential to produce about 92,000 tons of fish per annum. Fishing activities are carried out in different lakes of the country, such as Lake Tana, Lake Ziwai, Lake Hawassa, and so on. Students, here's a question for you to answer. What are the economic advantages of fishery to the Ethiopian economy? You have one minute and 30 seconds, after which we shall discuss it together. Did you answer the question? Good. Now let's see the economic advantages of fishery to the Ethiopian economy. To the population, fishery as a subsector can be a source of food, income, and employment. To the national economy, fishery can be a source of foreign currency earnings. Students, in spite of this huge potential, fish industry is underutilized and underdeveloped in Ethiopia. Official estimates show that the fish industry shares only 1% of the GDP. Some of the problems which hinder the development of the fish industry are lack of awareness about fishery among the society, lack of market and market network, absence of appropriate rules and regulations for commercial fish production, and lack of incentives. Students, in our today's lesson, we have discussed land, livestock, and fishery from among the resource bases of Ethiopia. 
we have also identified the factors that have hindered the development of livestock and fishery resource bases of Ethiopia. We have noted that land has been extensively utilized in Ethiopia. It significantly contributes as a resource base to different activities such as agriculture, industry and construction. However, livestock and fish resources of Ethiopia are underdeveloped. In the next lesson, we will learn about forestry as the other resource base of Ethiopia. Until then, it is goodbye from me. Goodbye. Thank you.